Hello and welcome to another very special episode of Clutchcast. I'm Matt Schroyer and I'm here inside my good friend and project car, the BMW Z3 Roadster. Now usually I'm working on things under the hood. Lately I've been doing a full coolant system refresh. Uh, more on that in previous videos and future videos, if you're interested in that. But uh, I'm in the uh, the cabin right now for uh, for a very different reason. You know, when you're doing these kind of big projects, uh, you come across uh, a lot of maintenance items that you might do along the way while you're in there. Um, one of them, while the uh, coolant system is being refreshed, means that you take off the intake manifold, uh, disconnect the throttle body, and that's a perfect opportunity to replace the uh, throttle cable in your BMW while you're doing the rest of that. So that's what I've been doing. Um, is trying to replace that throttle cable, but I have a pretty big uh, complication with that. Uh, there seems to be a, a tiny rust situation uh, near the pedal region here in the uh, driver's side of the interior of the car, and it's gotten so bad, in fact, that it has actually rusted away the uh, retaining clip that keeps the gas pedal attached to the floor. So I have that piece right here. This is actually uh, was welded into the bottom of the car. You can actually see uh, where those welds actually uh, were put into place. And all of this just came off. I'm not quite sure of the origin of the uh, the rust and so far as like it could have just been, you know, the previous owner just got in with muddy shoes way too often and got that floor <clears throat> a little bit wet. It could also be flood related. I'm really not sure, but the thing is, I've got to fix this part before I can put in a, a new pedal and get this thing back on the road. So uh, my strategy for this is one, clean this piece up. This is this is really rusty. This needs to be cleaned up. Uh, two, clean up the uh, the floor of the car a little bit where this attaches uh, to get a nice uh, clean surface to to uh, put this back into place. Then I'm going to take some JB Weld epoxy, epoxy this back into place very carefully. I'm not going to actually weld it back into place. We're just going to try the epoxy. should be pretty strong, hopefully strong enough. After that, paint over the whole thing with some rust-inhibiting paint that I have. So I'm excited about that whole process. A uh, little bit worried about the rust in the car, but uh, I, think, uh, I think this is the right way to go. So I'm just going to get into it with step number one, cleaning up this uh, attachment point for the accelerator. Okay, now that we got that uh, metal retaining clip uh, cleaned up a little bit, it's time to clean up the attachment point on the floor of this car. So right now I have a uh, some bags around here, some gaffer tape, some some nice low tack gaffer tape, uh, just to kind of block this area off. I'm going to be doing some painting later. Don't want any of that to get on the carpet. Um, did, however, have to cut the carpet up a little bit just to give me some more room to access. The, uh, the necessary area under here. So this is this is the area where I'm going to have to apply some uh, oh some 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 grit, some cleaning, I guess. First things first, I'll go ahead and uh, basically clean this up the same way I did the uh, that metal clip for the for the pedal. Uh, just you know using the the drill with the uh, wire brush, and that should be good enough. Okay, so the floorboard of the car is fairly well prepared for me to go ahead and epoxy in this uh, metal piece um, so that I can actually get this pedal to mount again. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and show you, while everything is out, uh, how to go ahead and uh, rip out your plastic accelerator pedal. If you ever have a similar issue or just want to replace it or anything, basically uh, it goes like this. You know, this is this is kind of your view uh, down on the floor of the car facing you is the driver. On the other side, on the flip side, is this tab. This tab will actually have to unlatch like this, all the way to the bottom. you got to free it there. 
And then the next thing to grapple with are these two plastic tabs right here and right here. Those interface with the holes and the metal receptacle and the floor. So sometimes what you can do, um, if you have a vantage point, you can go ahead and, and, and kind of poke the plastic ends through to get it to like that. There's one. And then pull. Hopefully yours won't be as difficult, but this seems to be the best way to do it, at least from my perspective. Like so. Kind of walk it. I'll make sure the tab is down, of course. That's key. There we go. Ta-da! So again, the key basically in the back here is to get this tab disengaged. This can be the hardest part, but once you've done that, um, a lot of people, if they don't have a faulty uh, clip in the floor like this, can just yank it out. So yeah, I hope that's helped you a little bit. So now my job, and I've got a new replacement uh, pedal too, the, these are not too expensive, is to uh, go ahead and epoxy this to the floorboard with some JB Weld. I'm going to let it sit overnight. I think the cure time is about six to eight hours. Um, that should be uh, enough to get this job done. So uh, here we go. Uh, I have the pedal uh, mocked up here because I want to make sure that uh, all my angles are right. I don't want to put this, epoxy this, in a bad position in the wrong spot. So I've got basically the whole pedal assembly in here. Um, I mentioned earlier how to get the, uh, the plastic pedal um, out from the floor section or the, the, the floor clip. Uh, from the back side, you have to unclip that plastic tab there. The other part of that uh, disassembly process is actually uh, up here. All right, so you can get the pedal to, uh, if it's disengaged, to swing out like this. But basically, you can see on this end, uh, to get this pedal out, there is only a single clip holding this all together. So once you get that and pop that clip out, it's a circlip, but you can get it out, and uh, boom, like that. Now just trying to fish this into the right position for epoxying, and I think I think this was about the position it was, and that seems to be correct. So now that uh, everything is kind of mocked up where I want it to be, I'm going to go ahead and mix the uh, the epoxy from the JB Weld epoxy. It's a two-part epoxy. Um, reading the instruction, it takes about uh, six hours, uh, four to six hours cure time, um, at which point you don't want to move anything. You got to keep things steady for four to six hours, and you shouldn't use it for 15 to 24 hours. So the set time is 15 to 24 hours. I don't have to worry about any of that because this can sit as long as I need it to, but just keep that in mind if you're Doing a similar experiment, uh, you might have to let it sit a while for that epoxy to cure. But uh, that's what I'm going to do now. Well, as you can tell by uh, the fact that the uh, pedal isn't fully installed and the uh, metal clip for the bottom of the pedal is... Uh, not installed either. Now, that didn't uh, go according to plan. So what had happened was uh, this garage got very cold. It got below freezing, in fact, probably probably 30 degrees thereabouts. We had a, a cold snap. And uh, wouldn't you know it, epoxy doesn't cure that well in cold temperatures. In fact, the, uh, the instructions for the JB Weld indicate... Uh, that cure time above 40 degrees can be anywhere from 15 to uh, 24 hours. But uh, below that, it simply says <laughs> curing time uh, will increase. It, it doesn't, doesn't say exactly how long it takes to cure below 40 degrees, but not ideal temperatures. So now that it's warmed up a little bit in the garage, I'm going to take another stab at this. I'm going to clean up the bottom just a little bit, but not too much. This does, however, give a good indication of what it would be like when it's fully cured. Uh, I took this piece out, put it back inside so that it could warm up and cure fully so I could get a better idea of, you know, what I'm working with. And it's 
pretty darn solid, right? So I'm not going to actually scrape all this down. I think it's good to have a little bit of material here on the bottom. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to mix up a fresh batch of uh, JB Weld. I'm going to use more than before. I think part of the problem was I just didn't use a whole bit. I'm going to try to zoom in here. As you can see, it's just a, a little bit that I put on here. I really need a nice big glob of it. I really do. And uh, hopefully that will provide enough coverage that it can uh, get a nice seat on the floor there. And uh, hopefully this time it will stick. It will cure. It's uh, it's about oh, 55 degrees in here right now. Almost, almost 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. Let's, uh, let's hope that it works. Alright, so this pedal has been uh, set in place for about 36 hours, so uh, I'm going to take off some of this uh, gaffer tape here and uh, see what we got. Is it... Oh yeah, it's this is, uh, this is firm. Excellent. This is exactly what we wanted. Uh, I can go ahead and move on with the next procedure, which is um, I'm going to take the pedal off and uh, get down to the metal here. You can see that there's... Uh, some rustage happening under there. I'm going to clean that up a little bit, uh, but mostly what I want to do is cover it up with uh, this Pore 15 Rust Preventative Permanent Coating. Uh, this is pretty nasty stuff, so you definitely want to use all the available precautions, you know, well-ventilated area, gloves, for example, eye protection. Um, it's also pretty expensive in terms of the types of paint that you can buy. Um, luckily I found this little four ounce uh, container for a reasonable price, you know, and that's great if you just want to try it out for the first time like I am here. 
never used this before, so I don't want to just go whole hog into a larger container not knowing what I'm getting into. So this was the right price point for me. Uh, there's no instructions as far as to uh, cure time per temperature. It is now in the low 50s in this garage. So I'm just going to go ahead and give this 24 hours uh, to cure, and that should be enough. And uh, we'll see how that goes. I've got my paintbrush here. Everything is uh, taped off. And um, hopefully it won't get any splatter anywhere. So here we go. All right, it's a, it's a whole new day. This has had more than 24 hours to cure, so let's check out how that uh, pour did, P-O-R. Pretty good, all right. Yeah, that's, that's nice. So the main purpose of this was to make sure that this doesn't um, rust up again and break free. And I'm just gonna set this back down here because now all that we basically need to do here is uh, uh, put the pedal back in, and I got us a brand new pedal, and I also got some brand new clips to, uh, to hold that pedal in there. And after that, it's just a simple amount of calibration. So we're all ready for a brand new gas pedal to be installed, but there's some other stuff I want to uh, take care of first, namely, install a new throttle cable. So all that will happen in an upcoming episode. I want to thank you for joining me, and I'll see you down the road.